Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Let's Learn This Together. And today we're going to be covering the object editor and everything therein. So that includes the object editor itself, the difference between objects and instances, how to assign sprites to objects, the event system, parents, and the basics of physics. Let's dive in. So an object is kind of the lifeblood of every game. In here, we've got several different ones, including game, ghost, and player. Let's go ahead and open up ghost by double clicking on it. And this is gonna open the object editor. So inside here, we can rename it. We can assign or edit the sprite on it. We can change the collision mask. And then there's a bunch of properties down here, which we'll get to in just a minute. Over here, it opens up automatically is the event window, which we're also going to cover. And we're gonna look at a little bit of code because code lives inside of events, but we're not gonna be doing much coding right here. So let's start with the basics, the names. This is called O Ghost. Now you might be wondering, why is that? And that's because in Game Maker, you cannot have two assets with the exact same name. So if we open up sprites and look at enemy, we have one called S Ghost which stands for Sprite Ghost. This stands for Object Ghost. So most developers will use a prefix of O, OBJ, whatever the case is, you need some kind of differentiator to know that this is an object, this one is a sprite, and that way GameMaker doesn't yell at you. You can rename it from here. You can also rename it over here by slowly double clicking, or you can right click rename. Now I'm gonna leave it as O Ghost. It's very fitting. Down here is the sprite. So we can choose a different sprite right here by just clicking on this and then choosing a different one. Setting it to a level would be very strange, so I'm not gonna do that. And then we can also create a new sprite. It'll open up the sprite editor immediately and assign that newly created sprite to this object. We can edit the sprite and we can edit this specific image. You can also just drag a sprite from the assets and put it onto the object editor. You can actually do that on most of these editors, including like the tile set editor and more, which is really handy if you have the sprite open and you can just grab it right there. Below that is the collision mask, which for a lot of things, you'll want to leave it just the same as sprite, but we're not going to cover that right now. And then below that we have visible, which means can you see it inside of your game? Solid. This is useful for collisions and sometimes you want it checked and sometimes you don't. It all depends on how you're doing your own collisions. Persistent means when you move from room to room, is this going to travel with you? Most of the time you do not want things to be persistent. Things like the game manager or the player, you want persistent because when you change rooms, yeah, you want them to follow you. Otherwise, all of the ghosts from the first room inside of here would follow you around to the next one and it would get very, very overwhelming. So most of the time you do not want things to be persistent. And then we have uses physics. So let's go ahead and talk about physics. This, if you check it, well, it doesn't really look like it does anything. But then if we open up our physics tab, we can then see there are a lot of different options inside of here. Now I'm not gonna cover these because getting into the nitty gritty of physics or even more just surface level stuff gets a little complicated. But in essence, if you need a physics system, consider using the one that GameMaker has built in. You can control things like the density, the friction, whether it starts awake, if it's a sensor, you can change the collision shape of the objects that you're using here and so much more. Now, if you're using the physics system in GameMaker, it is going to use a totally different set of functions and code for doing collisions and moving around. So keep that in mind. If it's a physics-based game, definitely use physics. If it's just a little bit like you're doing a platformer and you want to be able to jump, probably create your own gravity and move on from there. But don't forget, you can have a physics system. Then let's talk about events because events are how things happen in Game Maker. This ghost already has a few. Let's double click on create and check this out. So inside here, we've got some code. This green code over here is comments. This helps us read it, but all of this code is actually doing stuff. So a lot of times code names for variables are abbreviated. So dir is for direction, speed is for speed, g is for gravity and so on and so forth. These are all variables that have been created for this 
O ghost. But then image speed down here is what's called a built-in property. Every object has a lot of data about it stored that you can access. And that's all I'm going to say for now because there's a lot we could talk about there. But the events in GameMaker are when your code get triggered. So let's say we run our game by pressing F5 or clicking this little play button. This code for the ghost just got run on every single ghost inside of here. You may not be able to see it, but you can tell that they are now moving around. They have set their direction. They've chosen one. And then in the step event, which we haven't looked at yet, they're choosing a new direction when they hit something like a solid or the, or the ledge over here. So this code gets run when it gets created. The step event, this is actually a custom function that was written for it. This is running every single frame of your game. And most games run at 60 frames per second, which means this is being processed 60 times every single second. And that's a lot, but this is going to handle it moving, checking for collisions, and making sure the ghost is doing what it's supposed to be doing. Then we have draw which is kind of like the step event in that it runs 60 times a second or every frame for your game. But this is handling all the drawing. So this is actually drawing the ghost itself. And then it's drawing the sprite of the ghost. So it's drawing a shadow for that ghost, which you can also read the comments, which are super helpful. Now there's a ton more events besides these three. If we click on add event, you can see that. Destroy, clean up, alarm, mouse, key down, and so on and so forth. Most of these have menus, and some of them have menus inside of menus. Now, all of these events are useful in one way or another. It's knowing when to use the right event that distinguishes a good programmer from a great one. And as you code more, you will figure that out. But starting out, just use the basic events of create, step, and draw is a great way to get started. Now let's talk about something that is oftentimes confusing for new developers and sometimes even experienced ones. And that's the difference between objects and instances, which is what these are. So we've got a ghost layer over here, which if you want to learn more about rooms and everything there, check out the room editor video as well. But we have a lot of ghosts inside of here. And even though these say, oh ghost, these are not objects. These are what we call instances. And that's because, well, actually it even says instance underscore and then it has a unique name. And that's because an instance is kind of a specific implementation of an object. So we wrote the code for the object and told it what to do. But that code, while each instance is running it, is just a general blueprint that it can do. And then you can come in and change every single ghost and have it do unique things based on whatever variables you want, such as which side of the map the ghost is on, how much health the player has, how close they are to the player, and so on and so forth. If we wanted to open this up and put in some unique code to this instance, we could. We could say image blend equals C aqua. What this does is I'm basically taking this white ghost and I'm making it semi blue. So if we run this now, this specific instance is going to be blue. So we have a object of ghost, which controls the primary logic and how it functions. But then everything inside of your room is an instance, which means it can have its own code, its own logic and do its own thing. So objects are over here in the asset browser, instances are everything you put in your room. And there is a very big difference in game maker. You will create instances with code. You will destroy instances with code. Very rarely will you just destroy or create an object because if you do that, well, you can, but if you destroy, Oh, ghost, you'll actually destroy every single ghost in that room because it can't tell the difference. But if you choose a specific ghost with a specific ID and say, Hey, move that one or destroy that one or make that one super powerful. That is the power of instances and the differences between objects and instances. Last thing I want to talk about is parents and inheritance. This is an often overlooked power inside of game maker and object oriented programming languages in general. So let's take a look at this by pressing parent. 
Now, this ghost has no parents. It has no children. It's very sad. It's all alone. But let's go ahead and take a look at pickups instead. We have something called O Pickup Parent, and this has two children. And if we open up one of those children, we can see that that O Pickup Parent is that child's parent. That's a tongue twister for you. So we have a parent, we have a child. What is the benefit of this and why does this not just make it more confusing? Well, inheritance using parents allows one object to share code with another. It also allows that object, such as a star or a heart, to be checked by code by just looking at the parent. So if we go back to this room, we can see we've got hearts, we've got stars kind of all over the place. And if we run the game, we'll see that each one of these is animating, it's doing something. So it's bouncing, it's moving around, and we can collect it and all of that you can do with parents. So let's take a quick look at how that actually works. The O pickup parent has events like the create and the step. Then those events get transferred to the child. You can see here that we have a create and a step event for the star, but we can't actually do anything inside of here. I can't delete it, I can't add more code because this code is actually the parent's code. And you can see there's even a lock and a symbol indicating that it is being inherited. Now, what's really cool is you can right click and you can inherit this event. So you can take it all and add to it, or you can completely override it if you don't want to use the parent's event for maybe just the create, but you want to keep the step. This is a really powerful concept as you grow in your game developer career. Imagine having one enemy parent and a hundred different enemies that you can all hit with the same attack. They all take damage, but they all do different things based on their own unique logic, but you can still interact with them with just one line of code looking for, oh, enemy parent, not, oh, goblin and oh, spider and so on and so forth. Parents are not something to be forgotten or learned about later. Definitely keep an eye on them now spend the time, look at it, read about them. They are extremely powerful and very helpful, especially if you're just starting out and you want to get going. It's very tempting to just ignore parents and just say, oh, I'll do it my way. But they're there, they're built in, they're awesome. Don't forget about them. And that's everything I wanted to cover when it came to the object editor, the events, and everything to do with them. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please leave a like, share the video, and as I always like to say, keep making, keep learning, and I'll talk to you later.